<laughs> oh, I can see the light at the end of the bathroom renovation tunnel. Today, I am showing you the truth to tiling and drywalling as a total beginner and newbie as we almost wrap up this bathroom renovation. My first one ever. Oh, your shadow looks so cute right there. That's Miss Jess, everybody. She's back again. So cute. Look at you. I was on a bit of a pause because I had to wait for some permajacks to come in. When they finally arrived and Jess was here, I was able to use her help and her eye to walk through the trailer floor with a level and kind of figure out where we need to jack it to make it level, obviously. Because if I were to do the drywall and tile right now without it being level and then level it, you have the greater risk of cracking your drywall, cracking the tile because yeah. you're oh, shifting it. Even an eighth of an inch can do a decent amount of damage. Oh, no. No, it has to go up to one of those notches How do we get to fit. Them? Okay, so we have the perma jack on a paver, and now Miss Jess is releasing it. Ready? Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh! oh no. No, no, no. All right, one down. Second one to go. Right now, these pavers and permajacks are very open to the elements. I'm going to be blocking that off with some sandbags and building a deck and an access point just to make sure that this is fully weatherproofed. So even though the weather may be shifting and the sand will shift around it, I can do my best to protect it so it's not shifting the actual trailer and the leveling we just did. Ah! That one wasn't that bad. Should we check the level? I'm so excited to see it. Imagine it's like perfect. Hi, what do we need to do? No, I think it needs to go up. Higher, so we can just jack it. Right? Why was that the easiest but scariest thing to do? Right? Look yeah, at that. it's literally level. Look, look at that, baby. Oh my God. Now we're heading into tile and I'm showing you how I actually learn is via YouTube. So the only time I have experience is with my dad, which I will talk about a little bit later. And then the one on my own, which also didn't go according to plan. After watching a decent amount of videos and just psyching myself up, I started to prep the area I was gonna put tile to make sure everything was as level as possible and a great blank canvas. My question is how do you get in the corner? I'm nervous to do this. What if it turns out terrible? What if I do this all and it looks terrible when I step back? Can we do it? Oh. No, it's gonna be good. We're good. Last time that I tiled, I mixed it myself and it was not consistent, so I opted to buy the pre-mixed thin set, which saved me time and a little bit of stress being a beginner to the whole tiling thing. And you guys watching this live, I'm not live, but uh, real time on the camera. I'm gonna time lapse, don't worry, but I'm showing you. I'm back buttering, I'm doing the whole thing. I'm one tile in and I already have a ton of takeaways. First thing is I believe I'm using way too much thin set, but I was only going to learn that by doing the entire shower by myself, right? By feel, that's how you get into a new trade. So I wasn't beating myself up on that. The back buttering situation, again, too much thin set. There should be like barely th anything on there, but it was a little bit hard with cement tiles to have that thin set like properly adhere since you need to soak them before. It is preferred to soak them before, so that made it kind of just an extra step to dry the tile, then put the thin set on. It was just a lot for a first timer, but I stuck with it. We just lined them up with each other. My dad, when I tiled with him, this was the thing that drove him crazy. He made sure all of them were flat to the wall. All right, first tile. We're Check. in! I think. So now I add spacers and do the next set. I'm really taking it at a slow, slow pace, tile by tile, and the thin set should, the trial marks should go in one direction, that is preferred. And when you smush it after back buttering, you want this thin set to basically ooze out of every side because if you don't, you have air pockets and that can crack your tile. Hands down, my biggest takeaway is right here where you see me go in with a level to see if the faces of the tile are flush. I wish I had the patience as a beginner to sit and take the thin set off and put it 
it back on just like my dad and I did when we tiled together. That took us a couple days and I understand why that is the most tedious part that I started to kind of opt to say, oh, well, it just looks rustic when it's not flush, but that's not the truth. I just didn't have the patience. I don't think they're dry yet, so we can push them up and recut the bottom if you want. How did I get that wrong? That should be flush to the top. Fun fact, I set the tile thing wrong, so we need to move all these up because this is supposed to be flush to the top. I would have totally made a million excuses to not shift this tile row up and compromise the design of the shower just because I was feeling lazy. So thank you, Jess. I cannot believe Miss Jess is doing drywall. We're almost done. And then I am over there doing tile. So we're just kind of splitting. Oh, it actually Split looks really good. Truth be told is I'm not a stickler for technique the first time I am doing something. So although the quality of the job isn't going to be top notch, this is where my hands can get dirty and I can start to learn where to fine tune to move forward. Just like my friend Jess did with drywall. She didn't know how to do any of it and now she absolutely loves it and she dominates drywall. It's insane. I realize everybody in my group has a specific skill like Lindsay with electrical and plumbing, Jess with drywall, and now I am determined to make tile my thing. Gosh, aren't my friends just the absolute most incredible? Look at her go, okay, do you guys remember when I was doing this and it took me a week and a half to do one wall? It just took this woman six hours in total to do basically my entire bathroom. I'm sorry. I can't wait to get to the level of drywall that Jess is at. She uses Quick Set 20, which makes the process of drywalling much faster. Another thing she mentioned is you wanna to try to get as large of a sheet on the wall if you can. Right here, we couldn't. For some reason, I forget, and it had to be split, but preferred you want one piece right there. She was out the door, and we were moving on to the next day, and I was just gonna pick up where she left off. I'd like to take a second to thank today's sponsor, HelloFresh. HelloFresh sponsors your girl monthly, but like I always tell you, it really is a part of my everyday lifestyle. With HelloFresh, you get fresh pre-portioned ingredients and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. You can count on HelloFresh to make your home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. That's why it is America's number one meal kit. HelloFresh offers so many recipes to choose from each week to help you break out of your recipe rut, which is something I am so guilty of. I love going on to their app and seeing what they have each week week that you can custom edit. You can add different additions onto like proteins or breakfast bites, even the desserts. They have some cheesecakes that are so yummy. You can save time and stress effortlessly because they offer up to 50 menu and market items to choose from every single week, including vegetarian, calorie smart, and gourmet options, providing plenty of variety for you to choose from. They can also help you eat more sustainably because they have pre-portioned ingredients, which means there's less prep for you and less wasted food. If you guys are interested in trying out HelloFresh, you can head over to HelloFresh.com and use code METS14 for up to 14 free meals and three free gifts. Yes, that is HelloFresh.com. Use my code METS14 for up to 14 free meals and three free gifts. Thank you so much to HelloFresh for sponsoring Girl Monthly over here on these projects. I truly appreciate you and keeping me sustained. Let's jump right back into the DIY. Let's try that again, shall we? I let the thin set dry for as long as I could. We are going to seal it another day, but I moved forward with wrapping up the drywall. And before we could do that, we needed to revisit the ceiling, the wood accent ceiling that I then took down to insulate this wall properly before slapping up some drywall and moving forward with that process. My pops actually came to visit and he was working on my irrigation system to my land when he heard the drywall fall in the next clip. And it just made me laugh because this is frustrating to do alone. And I didn't realize there was tools to help you if you are doing the job solo. So I've linked those down below for you. Dude. Oh. Okay, holy sh Let's try that again. That thing fell on me. All right, fingers crossed, everybody. Come on. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Oh, don't move. I am not using Quick Set 20 because I am no pro like Miss Jess. I am starting with Joint Compound and then hopefully I'll make my way to Quick Set 45. As I first step into moving fast with drywall, Joint Compound needs a decent amount of time to dry. So after I was feeling comfortable with the ceiling, how it was looking, I moved forward with adding a skim coat after sanding down some of the high spots on the wall to start to get that smooth, flat, crispy wall. 
I stopped mid mess because a storm rolled through and I haven't leak tested the roof and it was really scary for me because right when I threw up all this gorgeous drywall that you see and I'm getting really stoked, I sat back and just waited to do anything because I wanted to see if there was any kind of leakage coming through the wall so I could fix it now versus continuing with the work that I'm doing while it's raining and then start to see a leak. Holy cannoli. Fun, not so fun fact. I've been working on this blank wall for like two and a half hours. I don't know why my brain wasn't thinking about uh, doing this measurements, doing these measurements in a different way to make sure it was level. But I finally figured it out after two and a half hours. I'm not sure if you noticed, but I switched colors from the large wall to the small wall. The large wall had gray and these tiles are really susceptible to stains since they're cement and very porous. I switched to white just to hopefully avoid any stains because I wasn't sure. She says, um, she sort of knows how to tile a little bit. It's not perfect, but it's working? Question mark. Let's go, Rage Babe. Look at you do it. Um, okay, we're gonna grout, but hi guys. Hello. So we're gonna grout, but this is Lily Cement Tile, and they actually have a few specific items that you need to use when using their tile because they're cement tiles. One being this flex color grout, um, and that is because you don't wanna stain the tiles. They're a little bit more porous. They are very porous, so you have to use their recommendations. I'll leave a link down below for you guys, but we're just gonna get to it and pipe this stuff on and grout away. I have the first time that I ever tiled by myself on a, another tutorial of a shed makeover that I'll link for you. And I did the same process. I piped it into place. I took that pad and pressed it into the tile at a 45 degree angle and then cleaned it up as I went with a tile sponge. I'm pretty stoked on it. After I wrapped up the grout, I moved forward with just focusing on wrapping up the skim coat. I did a total of three really nice skim coats on all the walls to make them nice and smooth, and I went in with a primer paint. You want to make sure to prime your drywall after doing it. Do not just throw on regular paint. Oh, I love it, I love it, I love it. I'm so excited for the next phase. You guys must be so confused what's happening there. One thing you can totally see through the series is I'm really trying to not cut corners. So revisiting the ceiling after it's properly drywalled and insulated to add the accent back like you should felt so good. Live. I'm living. I'm living to DIY. Yes. Oh my God. Yes. Yes. Oh, could I cry? Could I cry? I removed this ridiculous door frame idea because I'm becoming far more confident with welding to execute a larger weld for this door. So that's why you see me taking it down here. But I did want to update you guys because this was crazy. I don't know what I was thinking here. From demoing the original bathroom to putting a new subflooring and framing to now, it's pretty insane the process we're going through. It's exciting to be to this point of the room to have like a physical room that you can walk in and it's like walled in, ceilinged in, windowed in, tiled in. Ugh, it's just beautiful. And I wanted to share up until this point because now the next episode, we're like fully moving forward with details and the remainder of the series, I'm no longer drawing things out. They will be one room, one hit wonders for you. So it's nice to be at this point. It feels like I can finally breathe and move forward with like full design Rachel mode after being Rachel builder mode contractor for the last couple of months. And then what will be the vanity in the next episode you will see put together because the electrical just went out. Fun fact. I cannot get over that my brain in my own two hands and my wild women that are popping in and out help me get to this point. And to shower with the sunset and a sunrise, I mean, I just, I'm so excited to wrap up this bathroom and head into the hallway and the bedroom, living room, kitchen, all of it. Ugh. With every episode, I would love to thank five of my beautiful patrons. And this episode, it is thank you to Jane, Vera, Kaylin D, Nikki F, and Mallory. Thank you so much for your love and support. There's a lot happening over there gearing up for the new year, which I talked about in my live if you didn't catch it. I will see you soon for another DIY.